Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Logan, the drunken metalhead who muses, and tonight I am kicking off my end of year 2023 season with a bang. I want to talk about my favorite album covers that were featured on some of the best music of this year. So, I'm going to do five honorable mentions and then a top ten for what I consider are the best pieces of artwork that have adorned releases that came out in 2023. So first, a couple notes about the uh, album covers I'll be talking about. A lot of death metal is being featured and a lot of the covers specifically feel like larger than life, if you will. Like they deal with, you know, cosmic monstrosities, scenery that just is almost too expansive for the human mind to comprehend, you know, yada yada. But there's there's some gore in there as well, and maybe some more straightforward concepts too. Not too much fantasy or sword and sandal this year. And then of course, I considered a lot more than just 15 album covers when making this video. Uh, link down below is the full number of, you know, albums that I was kind of sifting through and considering. There's a whole bunch of other great album covers that I did not include for whatever reason. Yeah, it's, it's just a sign that it was a good year for great art and great music. So let's get into the full video. So first, for the housekeeping, uh, I wanted to pick a local beer that features phenomenal can art, or in this case, bottle art. Because honestly, the craft beer scene and the metal scene is pretty closely linked in their love of just um, using everything at their disposal to market their products, you know? Um, I will say, I'm going to go on a little rant real quick, that I'm disappointed with the Louisiana craft beer scene when compared to the North Carolina one <laughs> I just came from. This, all these breweries and stuff, they seem to think they are in competition with like Salt Life or uh, some other southern like clothing brand, maybe they're in competition with Bass Pro Shops, but for the most part, all of the the beer cans and can art and all the designs feature either something to do with like hunting, fishing, uh, good old outdoor stuff, or like just we're in Louisiana, just plastered, you know, everywhere, just the like the saint symbol, you know, an LSU tiger over here, you know, a raft and a good old boy fishing over there. So there really has been not much cool can art for me to pick from for this. Thankfully though, one of the better breweries in the state, Parish Brewing, has this absolute iconic IPA called Ghost in the Machine. Whenever there's a skull, that's a plus. A skull with a hop brain, definite plus. Add to the fact that this IPA is 9%, super smooth and just refreshing. Yeah, I will sing the praises of this beer always. Cheers. And then in the background, we're jamming to a 2023 release as I'm starting to make my ultimate year in list. I gotta revisit my favorite albums. And this is a post-metal drone avant-garde avant act called Big Brave with their album Nature Mort Morte. I don't know, they're a three-piece. I saw them live here in New Orleans over the summer. And it's like less is more in a post-metal context. 
It's real cool stuff. Highly recommended. All right, so now let's dive into my five honorable mentions. And for the majority of this video, I will actually be in the background, and thankfully this wondrous art will be in the foreground, and I will just be talking over it. <laughs> Hopefully adding some extra notes and stuff. This is definitely preferred, as God knows I'm already getting tired of looking at this mug, so see you guys. All right, my first honorable mention goes to Blutas Nord with their newest album, Disharmonium Nahab. This artwork was done by Message Kamuda. I butchered that, I'm very sorry. Killer stuff. Next honorable mention, Torture Rack, Primeval Onslaught, and this was done, of course, by Rock Sadistic Art, dude from Australia. Dude has a very unique, iconic style of art, and it's perfect on this album. Honorable mention number three is just this insane piece that adorns the new Bell Witch album, Future Shadow Part 1, The Clandestine Gate, which is a painting by Jordi Diaz Alama. And from what I can tell, he does not do too many metal album covers, but this one is really cool. Honorable mention number four, a very dark piece that adorns Burial Horde's latest album, Ruins. This is a piece done by Chaos Dictator Design. And then finally, honestly this should be in my top ten. It's a bigger piece that is on two separate album covers. I am of course talking about Ulthers, Helionomicon, and Anthronomicon, which the art was done by Ian Miller. Look at these things, holy shit. Alright, now to get into the top 10. So coming in at number 10, we have the album In Symbol Under the Dark Sun by Serpent of Old. And I just love the detail of this piece and how it's very monotone in color. It's only like blacks and grays and whites, but they do so much with, you know, the shading and you start to notice the more you look and for example there is a ritualistic group of hooded figures right in the middle and then of course you see the serpent as well and I just love how it almost looks like a, a tree or a mountain or rocks but then at the same time it probably is some kind of serpentine entity Love the concept behind this album. Also, I really like how they incorporated the logo. Killer logo, by the way. And then also the name of the album at the very bottom with this, like, edging that surrounds it. Super cool. And, I don't know, it's just kind of a unique piece. So, number 10. In Symbol Under the Dark Sun. Alright, number 9. We're going straight into the death metal now. With Dripping Decay's debut album, Festering Grotesqueries. So this one was done by a dude from Finland, Tony Hetoma. I'm sorry for ruining your name, my friend. It features Dripping Decay's mascot, perfectly called Drippy. One of the things I love about it is just how it all really kind of meshes into one color scheme, <laughs> like the, the, the color is just perfect, and I really do like how much is going on. It's one of those where you do notice more the more you look at it, like these feet in the fire on the left side, and like zombies in the cemetery on the right, and I just realized there's this person that Drippy looks like he just popped out of. I have no idea what the fuck is going on, but it is crazy. Also, more props to a logo right here. I love the choice of blue. It really stands out. I, I mean, I think the color is probably one of the perks and the best parts of this album cover. So, number nine, 
festering grotesqueries. Number eight was actually one I did not think I would like or that would end up on my top ten. But this is Afterbirths In But Not Of. And this artwork was done by Alex Ekman Lawn. And I was originally not impressed by it. I thought it had kind of like an AI feeling, if you will. But the more I considered the concept behind the album by Afterbirth, the more it kind of fit. And the more I just started to notice things and really just feel unsettled by the artwork. For example, it features our protagonist from really all of the Afterbirth full lengths. I'm assuming the time traveler. He doesn't look great, or they, they don't look great. They look bent out of shape. Things are where they're not supposed to be. You see some machinery in here. There's, you know, some kind of growth in the shoulder, intestines in the arm. It really does tie into the whole concept of maybe the cost of traversing time and space and who knows what else. But I, I really think it ties well into the music into the concept that Afterbirth are trying to create with their most recent albums. This one especially, which I think just perfectly ties everything together into, go, uh, into a cohesive package. And I think this piece definitely does, and with some of the buildings and stuff that surrounds it, it makes me think of the last album, Four Dimensional Flesh, which I think is a great tie-in, and probably one of the strongest parts of Afterbirth's artwork up to this point and really their whole concept behind their three albums so far. So coming in at number seven, we're going to Majesties with Vast Reaches Unclaimed. This is a 20 buck spin release and the art is done by Juanjo Castellano. Yeah, it's just out of this world but ancient at the same time it feels slightly Lovecraftian like some kind of lost city but then it might not be on earth it's probably somewhere far beyond and who knows I mean that kind of just ties into Majesty's music as well it's very familiar but then very fresh at the same time just like this piece and I really love how it, it kind of works when you're looking at it far away, but then it also works close up where you're actually looking at all the details. You see the traveler traversing up the stairs here, and then you see all the details on the rocks casting down into the ocean and everything else. And then once again, killer logo up here, killer name of the album down here. I love the font that they chose for Vast Reaches, Unclaimed, and also the moons and the planets in the background perfect. Anyhow, even the light peeking through the clouds. Then number six, Autopsy, Ashes, Organs, Blood, and Crips. God damn it. Wes Binscoder is an amazing artist, and the work he's done with Autopsy in their new era has been some of the best, period. I mean, every time they release an album, that artwork is probably some of the best of the year. Uh, Morbidity Triumphant from last year was probably my favorite, I think. And this does not quite live up to the hype of that album, as far as artwork goes. But it comes close. <laughs> I just I just love the creativity that comes with these like familiar themes. Like, of course, we, we all know, you know, of a cannibal corpse and of, uh, you know skeletons and crypts and stuff adorning different album covers so this is nothing entirely new but at the same time it feels just exciting and unique and maybe it's the the dude who's just like got someone's intestines in his mouth maybe it's the fact that for some reason he's got three arms like what the fuck why not four dude's got three for some reason he's missing an eye his brain's exposed. He's harpooned some other dude's fucking head over here. 
it's it's crazy and what kind of horror fantasy did I just walk into and it just perfectly captures Autopsy's music and once again I just want to tie in the logo I love how the logo interacts with the artwork you know like the blood dripping off of it some of it ties or it, they kind of tie it in spatially with the, our central figure here some of it is behind him some of it is in front it's it's just cool alright number five we're sticking with death metal we have Celestial Sanctuary with their second album Insatiable Thirst for Torment and this piece was done by James Bosima who I actually first encountered because of a fellow YouTuber Literal Lee over on Heavy Art Talk he did a killer interview with this guy and he, I guess um, he's come back for a couple other streams on Lee's channel so definitely check those out I will link them for sure uh, this piece is just insane there's so many questions to be asked like is this some kind of cosmic entity are we in hell is he being tortured is he being primed like what's going on all I know is it's fucking cool like dude's being fed hot molten metal that is making his guts rot out I mean look we got looks like a esophagus in the streets down here and there's all these little Lovecraftian creatures just like well, why, what are they doing this, this has to be some form of torture and I just love the eye in the middle of the dude's chest so yeah death metal reigns supreme this year and then number four we're going to some sludge metal or what I call extreme sludge metal with Chain to the Bottom of the Ocean and their latest full length Obsession Destruction. Now, I absolutely love this album and I absolutely love this artwork. This is a Maurice Lewandowski artwork. Rest in peace, my friend. But man, this is probably one of my favorites of his. It's just very visceral, very cerebral, and just tortured. You can tell there's a lot of pain in here. I mean, it looks like this ghost is literally tearing himself apart, and whatever is beneath is just boiling over, and not in the good way, in the very destructive way. And it definitely ties into the music here. Chained to the bottom of the ocean, it's not easy listening, it's just pulverizing, and it wants you to hate yourself a little bit. And I think this artwork kind of embodies it. And then once again, to highlight how you can place your logo and your album title, I just like how it's over here on the left side of the piece, and kind of separates itself from the artwork entirely. Number three. We have the latest magnum opus from Esoctrillium. This is Co Astral Constellations of the Magical Zodiac. And this is a painting by Dolph? I don't know if I said that right, but sorry. It's a woman and she's an illustrator. She's done some impressive pieces for sure for some bands like uh, Cult of Fire among others and as well of course is her second with Esoctrillium but she's originally from Slovakia this piece is just haunting and breathtaking and very dark at the same time I uh, can't help but love the red and the blue kind of con contrasting themselves very unique color choices I think I mean the red is really more of a crimson blood red than anything and the blue really more of an indigo but the coolest parts of course is this eye up here and then I gotta love the hands of the woman I'm doing my best not to mention other features of her but the music itself matches the scope of this piece with over two hours of of crazy psychedelic 
progressive, atmospheric black metal here. It's tough to digest, just like this piece of artwork is on your first viewing. And then number two, here we go. Midnight Odyssey with their third part in the Bioloom series, entitled A Full Moon Madness. And I think what I like about this piece is that there's just many different layers going on. It's like uh, <laughs> a movie poster, kind of, all coming together. We got the central antagonist here, kind of the sun, if you will, bursting into flames. And we have a moon goddess lady behind. And then these figures on the right, a scythe behind, just beautiful space. There's just a lot of dimension and depth to this art. And then finally, the number one album cover of 2023 has to go to Sulphur Aeon with their latest release, Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. And this is a Paolo Giardi piece. And we, of course, are all familiar with this artist. He has been on top of multiple of my previous lists from previous years for best album covers. But this is definitely one of his best, bar none. And honestly, he has been on fire all year. He did other great album covers for uh, releases from Verathron, their album The Crimson Temple, Cryptopsy with their album As Gamora Burns, and Megaton Sword with their album Might and Power. And there are at least like four or five more I have not mentioned. To kind of dive into this piece, it really fits the scope of this album. I mean, this album is absolutely epic and features a combination of death metal, black metal, and just some really almost like heavy metal elements as well. And of course it ties in themes of Lovecraft beautifully. I just love the details here. We got the seven planets with the main entity, the swir swirling butthole entity in the middle. Just rivers of blood. We've got the creatures of water on the left. The creatures of earth on the right. And just chaos. But then there's so much order here, and really, that's how Giardi excels with his paintings. There's so much chaos, but then at the same time, you really do feel a sense of order and belonging from every single piece that enters into his artwork. Also, I gotta tell you, he has a very unique style. But at the same time, he doesn't copy himself that much. I mean, like, this is a pretty unique piece for him, in my opinion. But then, then at the same time, you can tell that this is his work. And it, it just, it fits the music of Sulphur Aeon and this album perfectly. So, number one has to go to Mr. Paolo Giardi with Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. So there you have it. 15 pieces of art that best summarize what 2023 was for album covers. They're my favorites. But then at the same time, there's so much more out there that I did not mention or probably haven't even heard of or seen yet. So I'm curious, what are some of your favorite album covers from this year? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.